Hi, it's Monty from Sportive Cyclist and in this video we're going to try out a bit of bike maintenance. One of the side effects of being stuck working at home this week is that I've managed to get out on the bike quite a bit. I'm thinking that will probably continue for some time. My winter bike, which is the Doors Aki, is starting to uh, feel a bit of the wear and tear of constant use. It really needs a good clean and also a bit of a strip down checking of various components. But before I do anything, that means that my bike ends up in a state like this one, probably best that I get the uh, Trek back up and running. So in this video, I thought I would tell you what the problems are with my Trek domain, what I'm going to do about them, hopefully give you a bit of insight into how someone who is not a bike mechanic is going to go about trying to get their bike working again. Um, wish me luck. So I should probably say this is not a how-to video, mainly because I don't know how to. This is just me showing you what I'm going to do and also all of the mistakes that I'm clearly going to make. I doubt anyone really watches my videos, but to the extent that you do and you see something I'm doing wrong, one, tell me in the comments, two, please be nice. So quickly, before we start looking at the uh, trek, and what needs doing there. A word about why I'm reluctant to start messing around too much with the doors. Definitely needs a good clean. The drivetrain is uh, Campagnola on this uh, bike. It's a good 14, 15 years old. I'm a little bit concerned about starting to mess around, removing things. One, I might not have the tool. Two, it might be that something shears off and I'm left without any bikes to ride. I'm gonna get the trek and running once I'm comfortable that that's all fine. It will be time to strip this one down, take everything apart, learn how it works, get all the necessary tools, hopefully have two bikes that are in reasonable working order. So what is wrong with the doors? In short there are two issues. The first one is the uh, headset bearing, or this lower bearing here, which sits on the steering tube, has totally gone. How did I diagnose the problem? In short, I did not. It was my brother-in-law-to-be. He identified that there was some rocking. If you put the brakes on and you push your handlebars forward, that you could uh, basically rock the bike over the front wheel, which indicated there is something wrong with the headset. To be honest, I knew there was something wrong with it because every time I rinsed the bike off after a muddy ride I did tend to see the following day a little bit of brownish, with hindsight, rusty liquid uh, dripping out of the headset. So here is the fork that I removed from my Trek domain and you can probably see there the sort of rusty, mucky build up. For info, the bottom bit here that I'm holding is carbon and then the top end here which is bonded on somehow one hopes with more than this tape is presumably made of aluminium alloy of some sort certainly not a heavy piece of kit so once i'd removed the uh, headset cap here and the bolt uh, i was able to dismantle the headset and uh, Let's have a look. Okay, here are the components of my headset that I've taken apart. We have some spaces up here. Shouldn't really have those given that I am a semi-professional, as we all know. We've got the bolt, the headset, what, cap? Compression sort of rings that help keep the uh, headset sort of in place. This is the bearing that goes at the top. Can I get that into focus? Not really. That's still moving fine. And here is the component that has... Uh, failed me or maybe i have failed it no grease in there it's rusted as hell this in particular is the piece that i need to buy in order to get my bike back up and running so having taken apart my fork and my headset and realized that i need to get some more parts i figured why not go the whole hog let's strip down the whole frame in order to check what's working what's not and see if i need to renovate anything else really. So in order to remove the fork I needed to take off the uh, brake assembly which we can see here which to be honest it doesn't look too bad. Better get some new brake pads and also I might take the opportunity to learn how to fit new 
cables. I'll be a pro mechanic after all of this. Now the other thing that I managed to do is remove the crank set. A few years ago when I fitted my power meter, the stages left only power meter, I made a bit of an F up fitting the uh, tensioning sort of plastic thingamajig and ended up having to cut it out and in doing so thought I'd ruin the thread of the crank I think itself. Try as I might, couldn't remove that crank. As part of this disassembly I uh, gave that another go. It's sufficiently loosened that I was able to remove the crank. Without being able to do that I would not be able to look at the bearings within the bottom bracket here and establish whether or not they need replacing. The short answer is that at least one of them does need replacing. This one is moving nice and smoothly. Uh, yeah, that's not moving. I think we're gonna need some new uh, bearings for the bottom bracket. Yay. To be honest, the level of mud and lack of maintenance of this bike is pretty embarrassing. I think it's time to stop all of this gassing and diagnosing and explaining and excusing and it's time to wash the bikes. Thankfully I stopped up. Oh. These I quite like for the old handies. That in there contains the old chain which I think might be beyond saving. Components. Beautiful. It just occurs to me that I've taken off the rear derailleur and I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've ever done it. In cases like this, I generally try and take a photograph just in case I can't remember how to uh, fit it back onto the bike. I've already removed it. I'm pretty sure it was something... <laughs> what I'm after is just trying to give myself a general idea as to the angle of the uh, rear of the cable that went into the rear derailleur. Who knows? A bit late now. Nice. Can you see that? Maybe not. One of my complaints with this uh, work stand, which is a work stand race by Elite is that other work stands I've seen grip the seat tube here and therefore allow this part here to be higher up. In this case it rests on this sort of brackety thing but having taken the wheels off, the handlebars, the fork, basically move it and sort of hold it like that. It's not at all stable. Not something I also want to do whilst holding the camera but it does mean that I can more easily get into the uh, bottom bracket part of the bike and give it a good clean bearing here really isn't moving at all this bit here is not really somewhere that I've spent an awful lot of time cleaning in the past a bit better now front derailleur it's time to come off Hardly a dream build, is it? Okay, so that escalated quickly. It's one of those things, isn't it? You just get a bit excited about taking things apart in order to clean them, and before you know it, you've dismantled the whole bike. And now we're at the point where I think I'm gonna cut the cables and so I'm going to learn how to re-cable a bike, maybe. Yep, that's 
that one off? Rear derailleur off? No, it's just the brakes. New bearing required. We're gonna have to stop this video now, not least because I'm running out of space on this memory card. Yeah, I seem to have dismantled my bike. I doubt you found this video particularly useful yet. Maybe you're interested in the Jeopardy. I'm gonna have to now buy all of the different bits, including all the cabling. I'm gonna have to consult my Zins bicycle maintenance book and all the photos that I've taken. And hopefully in future videos, I'll be able to reassemble this bike. If you like this video, please remember to hit the thumbs up icon and hit subscribe. I've been Monty, this is Sportive Cyclist, I'll see you next time. Safe cycling. Uh, yeah.